Purine Antiseptic, Listerine Toothpaste, and Prophylactic Toothbrushes present America's favorite family comedy, The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson, and of course his lovely wife Harriet as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson, and his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. Man is a confused animal. What did you say? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. I, I didn't notice you walk in. Did the book salesman finally go? Uh, yes, he did. Very nice young fellow, too, Harriet. Very alert, very aware. Alert to what? To the dangers of our modern living. Man is a confused animal. Just doesn't know how to live anymore. How about women? Yeah, the same thing. We rush through life helter-skelter, missing half of the important things. You take me, for instance. We have hundreds of fine books around the house here. I don't even know the titles of half of them. Just picked up this little booklet here. It looks mighty interesting. The Romance of Dirt. Where do we get this? Came with a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> you see, it's different now than it was in the old days. In the old days, people used to take time out to, to reflect a little bit. They'd get out under a big tree and, and browse and commune with nature and think things over. Nowadays, man has lost his intellectual curiosity. It's just as I said before, man is a confused animal. I thought the book salesman said that. Well, yes, yes, he did, but, but it, it's very true, Harriet. You take even in, in reading, for instance, the, the kids of nowadays, what chance do they get to become acquainted with really good literature? I mean, they spend their time reading comic books, they look at television, they watch moving pictures, they listen to, to, to radio. It's no wonder they're confused. Uh, hi, Thorny. Oh, hi, Ash. Where have you been keeping yourself all day? Oh, just browsing through a few books. Uh, you know, Ash, we should do more of this these days. Oh, you're so right, Thorny. It's a dangerous age we're living in. Not like the old days. You know, man had more intellectual curiosity in those days. He, he learned things for himself. But gee, nowadays, well, he's a, a confused, confused animal. animal. <laughs> Evidently stopped by your house, too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's an awful lot of truth in what this guy says, Thorny. I mean, after all, it is a dangerous age we're living in, especially for the kids. I mean, they don't have the advantage of the good, solid, old-fashioned literature that we used to have. Boy, Oz, you're right as rain. Moby Dick. Ivanhoe. Lady of the Lake, poems of Keats, Shelley, Byron. Delightful. And yeah, nowadays the kids have comic books, they have television, they have radio, all those things to keep their minds off the, the good, solid, old-fashioned stuff. I remember when I was a kid, I used to lie in bed with that flashlight under the blanket. All the hours I spent reading Treasure Island. Oh, really, Oz? Gee, that was my favorite book. No kidding. Yeah, the Rover Boys at Treasure Island. <laughs> I'm talking about the old classic Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. Oh. Side, the Rover Boys never went to Treasure Island. Oh, no, wait a minute, Oz, you're wrong there. The father got lost there, remember? He was looking for the treasure and the... No, treasure. no, 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 Thorny. I've read every Rover Boy book. You've got it confused with Africa. Don't you remember? And, and besides, it wasn't the father. It was Uncle Randolph. And don't you remember, the old sea captain had this mysterious map. Oh, and wait a minute, Oz, you're getting all mixed up. Uncle Randolph was back in New York State, putting the squeeze on Josiah Crabtree after the squabble about Sam Baxter. Sam Baxter was Dan Baxter, the son of Arnold Baxter, the town scoundrel. Okay, Sam, <laughs> Sam makes a difference. Anyway, it was Arnold who, who gummed up the Treasure Island expedition. Uh, Thorny, 
It wasn't Treasure Island, it was Africa. And besides, Arnold happened to be in jail at the time. He jail? Told, now listen to me, will you? He was doing a six-month stretch because he tried to boil Dick, the fun-loving rover, in hot tar. It was one of my favorite chapters. <laughs> fun-loving Dick? Oh, now that goes to show you how much you know about it. Sam was a fun-loving rover. Dick was the elder rover, engaged to the widow Stanhope's beautiful daughter, Dora. Well, you may be right there. But the Rover boys never went to Treasure Island. You've got to confuse with their expedition to Africa. Treasure Island. Africa. <laughs> Treasure Island. Africa. Treasure Africa. Island. <laughs> the Rover Boys books. Yes, I know they have. I phoned the librarian. Under an assumed name, of course. <laughs> Rover Boys on land and sea. Rover Boys in Mexico. The Rover Boys at Treasure Island. Where? <laughs> you know. If you see the Rover Boys in Africa, let me know. Take back this 250-pound encyclopedia, whatever it is. Oh, hello there, Mr. Nelson. Oh, uh, uh, you're uh, David's English teacher, aren't you, Miss... Uh, yes, Miss Fraser. Miss Fraser, how are you? Nice Very well, you. thank you. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Oh, it isn't often that we meet one of the fathers in the library. Oh, oh well, I, I had sort of a... a a literary discussion with my neighbor, Mr. Oh, Thornberry. Oh, about uh, Sir Henry Parkinson? I, I, I beg your pardon? Uh, his History of the Peloponnesian Wars. The, the book you have there. Oh, oh, oh so, no, 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 not... not uh, oh, so. <laughs> you're just like all the others. Uh, am I? You're a little bit ashamed of yourself, aren't you? Well... Uh, well, now, why should you be? Well, uh, no, no, I, 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 I don't think you understand. I think if you have a, an honest intellectual curiosity, you should be proud of it, not ashamed. Oh. Now, you're obviously interested in Greek history. Why not admit it? Oh, 
well, well uh, yes, naturally, uh, everybody's interested in, in, in Greek history, but, but actually, you see, I just came down to do a little research. Oh, of Mr. Course, Thornberry... you wanted to brush up a little. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> well, I, uh, I must admit I'm a little rusty on the Peloponnesian Wars myself. Oh, oh I, uh, that's understandable. How long have you read it? Oh, <laughs> quite a while. I bet you haven't opened it since college. Oh, uh, uh, maybe even longer than that. <laughs> the main thing is that you still have the interest. You know, that's what true intellectual curiosity gives us, Mr. Nelson, the hungry mind. Oh, oh, sure. Have you had any arrangements? Oh, hello, Miss Fraser. Hello, Mrs. Nelson. How are you? I was just complimenting your husband on his intellectual curiosity. Oh, yeah, yes, thanks. Uh, Harry, uh, 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 pardon me, Miss Fraser. If we hurry along, yeah. we have a few errands to do. Do you want to take a book? Oh, well, I, uh, yes, but uh, this is the, the book mainly. I, I'd like to have this, the, uh, you know, the, the, the Peloponnesian Wars by Sir Henry Parker House. Uh, Parkinson. Oh, Parkinson. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I, I, I'll go along first, Harriet. I want to get the car out of the Parker House. Goodbye, the, Mr. Uh, Nelson. Bye, Goodbye, bye, Mrs. Parker. Nelson. Goodbye, Miss Fraser. There's no doubt about it, man is a confused animal. <laughs> Listen to this, Harriet. The causes of the Peloponnesian Wars are understandably complex in that Potidaea, a Dorian town on the western promontory of Thrace, was induced to revolt with the support of the Macedonian king Perdiccas, formerly an Athenian ally. Imagine that. Yeah. Hello? Uh, Mr. Nelson? Yes? This is Miss Fraser. Oh, hello, Miss Fraser. What's on your mind? Well, we've scheduled a PTA discussion tomorrow night at the school on proper books for school children. We thought you might like to appear on the panel with us. Oh, well, I'd, I'd be delighted to, Miss Fraser. Oh, good. I, uh, I was a little afraid, of course, that you might find the subject sort of, uh, elementary. <laughs> well, of course, it's, it's not my specialty exactly, like Sir Henry. Oh, yes, I know. That's why we had the subject changed. Uh, what's that? We're going to discuss the Peloponnesian Wars. <laughs> I, I don't think I got that quite clearly. I said we're going to discuss the Peloponnesian Wars. When I told the committee that you were especially interested in Greek history, they simply wouldn't hear of anything else. Oh, well... Uh... Uh, Miss Fraser, uh, this might be a, a good time to let you in on a, a little a sort of a joke. Oh, no. Mr. Nelson, you can't get out of it. We're depending on you. With your vast knowledge of the subject, it's going to be an exciting evening. Ooh, uh, yeah, especially when you throw me out of the auditorium. <laughs> <laughs> we won't feel too bad if you outshine us. Uh, no, 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 you don't understand. I understand that modesty must be overcome by firmness. We'll expect you at the school tomorrow night at 8.30. Goodbye, Mr. Nelson. D -d but... What's the matter, dear? You look like you've been hit by a rock. <laughs> Where are you going? I think I'll go up to my room and, and have a good cry. <laughs> Oh, uh, not too bad. It goes a little slowly at first, but then after you get uh, warmed up to it, it, it speeds right along. You know, it's funny, more people aren't interested in this sort of thing. What do you mean? Well, I noticed the last time this book was borrowed was December 10th, 1910. <laughs> what page are you on? Uh, uh, page 8. Only page 8? Here, listen to this. Reads almost like modern fiction. After Herodotus had resided for some seven or eight years in Samos, events occurred in his native city which induced him to return thither. <laughs> the tyranny of Lygidamus had gone from bad to worse, and at last he was expelled. You know, now, stuff like that, you just can't put the book down.
How you doing? Oh, uh, uh, pretty well, thanks. Oh, good. You're up to page 27 already. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I got kind of a break, though. I just ran into 15 pages of maps. <laughs> Specious, cassius belly. Uh, Harriet, would you mind answering the door belly, please? <laughs> Intending to inflame the existing hostilities against Pericles and Athens by implicating him in the curse Hi, Thorny. Harriet, Dr. Thornberry, please. <laughs> I'll be at Thorny. Where's my colleague, my fellow scholar? Oh, I'm here in the dining room, Thorny. <laughs> Greetings, <laughs> Professor. <laughs> What are you doing over here this hour of the night? Never let it be said Thornberry didn't come prepared. We got to bone up, Oz, burn the midnight oil. Well, what do you got here? What have I got here? Well, that's a fine question to ask after you wrote me in on the discussion. I cleaned the entire shelf of the library, Oz. All eight copies. Eight copies of what? Well, the Rover Boys. The Rover Boys? <laughs> oh, sure. Miss Fraser called me and asked if I'd like to join in. Well, you mean to say the discussion is about the Rover Boys? A uh, Harriet, for goodness sakes. Here I'm Excuse studying me, this Jack. whole big telephone. Thorny, do you remember exactly what Miss Fraser said to you on the phone? Why, well, certainly. She said Oz was conducting a discussion on the Rover Boys and she would I like... She said Rover Boys? Well, maybe she didn't exactly say Rover Boys, but she said the book I was discussing with Mr. Nelson this afternoon. Now, what else could it be? <laughs> Thorny, uh, sit down for a moment. What's the matter? You tell him, dear. I'll make some fresh coffee. Thorny, my fine old gray-headed friend. I don't have gray hairs. You will. <laughs> what do you know about the Peloponnesian Wars? I have the layman's knowledge. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> What's your step to do with the Rover Boys? Uh, Thorny, uh, hold on to your hat. The discussion tomorrow night is about the Peloponnesian Wars. Oh, now, wait a minute, Oz. How can anybody say Peloponnesian into one phone and have it come out the other phone, the Rover Boys? <laughs> Relax, will you? You're getting panicky. Now, all we have to do is just read through these four delightful volumes. So just lean back, take your coat off, and let's get to work. Uh, the eye drops are right over there on the buffet. <laughs> the existing hostilities against Pericles and Athens by implicating him in the curse pronounced on the murders of Cyclon. Uh, what have you got on Callicrates? Uh, yeah, here we are. Mm-hmm. Born in volume two, died in volume four. <laughs> And took another road into the plains of Argus. Ah, uh -huh, that's absolutely right. How do you like that? <laughs> How you doing, fellas? Oh, hi, Harriet. Ask us anything reasonable about the Peloponnesian Wars, and we'll give you an answer just like that. Any reasonable question. Go ahead, ask us one. Okay, who won? <laughs> that's not a reasonable question. No, no, wait a minute. I just got a good point there. We'd better look it up. They might hit us with that tomorrow night. Wait a minute, would you two stand by for an important announcement? Such as what? Oh, Miss Fraser phoned. The discussion's been called off. What? Oh, what a disappointment! Oh. <laughs> if I post hard enough, I could talk you into going to the movies. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go to the movies, Thorny? Oh, now look, Oz, think of what you're doing. If we left this room, we'd be deserters. Where's your intellectual curiosity? You don't want to go to the show? Why, of course not. I happen to love literature. I have no desire to go to the Bijou tonight. It's a very good picture, Thorny. I know, I've seen it. <laughs> all this wonderful reading material. You mean to tell me you can leave this? Think of all the adventure that lies between these covers. Uh, Harriet Thorny is absolutely right. My intellectual curiosity and my thirst for good literature far surpasses my desire to go to the movies. Are you serious? Well, of course I am. Shall we begin? All righty. There you are, Oz. Fine. Suppose you take the Rover Boys on land and sea, and I'll read the Rover Boys on... 
Treasure Island? Are you just coming to bed? Yeah, well, I'm sorry I didn't mean to wake you. Go back to sleep there. What time is it? No, it's pretty late. Darn thorny, I couldn't get him to go home. Oh, look at the clock. It's a quarter to five. Darn clock with a luminous face. <laughs> I hear of reading the Rover Boys until almost five in the morning. Well, it wasn't my fault. I wanted to quit at four o'clock, but Thorny's such a kid. Oh, we settled the argument as to which one is the fun-loving Rover. Well, please tell me so I can go to sleep with a clear mind. Well, see, Thorny said Sam, and I said Dick. And Thorny was wrong. It was Tom. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Oz. Thorny, what do you want? Well, I'm having a little trouble. Will you put Harriet on? I want her to explain something to Catherine. Well, what's the matter? Well, I don't know, Oz. I keep telling her over and over, but... somehow she just won't believe I was up all night with the Rover Boys. <laughs> just arrived by special messenger. The story of Aristotle. Well, nice. And look at the card that came with it. Wishing you a speedy recovery, Miss Fraser. Yeah, where did she get the idea I was sick? I can't imagine. Well, and another thing that I just happened to think of, uh, I don't remember hearing the phone ring when she called last night. Did you hear any dialing? No. That's good. <laughs> well, now, now, wait a minute. Harriet, did you by any chance phone Miss Fraser last night and tell her I was sick? Well, I had to do something. Your intellectual curiosity wouldn't have let you stop with the Peloponnesian Wars. You'd have just gone on and on, and pretty soon you'd have been so smart, I couldn't be happy with you. <laughs> just what do you mean by that? Oh, there's some things I like to do. If you grow any smarter than you already are, I won't be able to do those things. What kind of things? Oh, little things. Like making phone calls and not having you catch on until the next day. Miss <laughs> Fraser was played by Paula Winslow. 